Hi, I'm Samantha, and I'm going to be talking for a few minutes about reinforcement learning as applied to partially observable systems and how we can use recurrent neural networks to help with that. Now, some motivation for this, reinforcement learning deals with the problem of trying to learn in real time or on uh, a real world system an optimal control policy when we may not know the model. Now, since we're dealing with real world systems, not, oftentimes we don't only not know the model, we also may not have full access to the state, that is, all the measurements with, which describe what's currently happening. This could be due to a couple reasons. We may simply have missing sensors, we may have sensors that are corrupted by noise, or in some fields there's a growing trend of image-based control, where we may have access to a still shot of the current state with no information about how that state is changing, for example, velocity. Now there are a couple of ways to deal with this. Obviously, if we're dealing with noisy sensors, we can do a filtering approach or belief state propagation, which is similar to common filtering. Uh, but another way to deal with this is with simple state augmentation. That is, if specifically if we're missing velocity information, we can augment our current state to include not only the most immediate information from our sensors, but say the information that we've gotten in the last 5, 10, 15 time steps, which will implicitly contain that velocity information. Now, given this augmented state, there are two things we can do with this in terms of deep reinforcement learning, where we're using a neural net to express our policy. We can use a standard multilayer perceptron for our neural net and simply feed all of that uh, accumulated state information directly into this, these dense layers, or we can add memory not only to our state, but to the neural net that contains our optimal policy itself by adding a recurrent layer to that neural net. Now, for this example, we're going to be using uh, LSTMs. Quick, re quick reminder, LSTMs have not only a uh, they have an internal state variable themselves that is updated as, as the input from the system changes. This allows them to incorporate a memory of the inputs we've seen before to affect the output, which makes them ideal for, uh, com uh, for compensating for missing velocity information. So for, the, for comparing these two approaches, using an MLP and using an LSTM in our network to try and learn an optimal policy, we're going to be looking at the following benchmarking problems. This is a double inverted pendulum that we're trying to stabilize and a single inverted pendulum that we're trying to stabilize. Now we want to look at both of them because they each present unique challenges. The double inverted pendulum obviously is less inherently stable, but has a more useful reward heuristic. In this case, we get feedback based on how long the pendulum remains upright and how close it is to vertical for the single inverted pendulum. While seemingly an, uh, an easier problem, it's a little more stable, we only get feedback about how long the pendulum remains upright, which means that it is very difficult to, say, train out this oscillatory behavior, whereas for the double inverted pendulum, this heuristic allows us to train almost perfectly stable behavior, as can be seen in this video. Now we look at the performance results between using an MLP and uh, a recurrent neural network to, appro to approximate our optimal policy when we are learning with partial or corrupted states. So for a benchmarking, um, initial layer, we first look at what happens when we train our, our agents on perfect state information. That is, we have access to all state variables, in this case, linear and angular position and velocity. And these are uncorrupted estimates. And we can see our initial results are not too encouraging. In this case, the simple multilayer perceptron neural network actually learns a better policy. In this case, we're judging performance as uh, how, how, how well our system can perform in the face of 
noisy observations during testing. So along here, we add more and more noise to our observations during testing and see how our performance deteriorates. And we can see in both cases, it actually looks like the MLP is a little more robust. However, now we're going to look at what happens when we don't train on perfect models. Since again, this whole approach is motivated by the fact that we rarely have that kind of training information available when we're training on physical systems. So in this case, we look at partially observable systems. So here we're training only on position information, linear position and angular position of the single and double inverted pendulums. And here we can see that when we train on imperfect data, adding memory to the neural net actually gives us much better performance. And this is more robust as we add more and more noise to the measurements that we have. Uh, this gives us an idea that the recurrent neural network is doing a better job of learning how to compensate for missing velocity information. Finally, we look at a slightly different case. And here we have access to all the state variables but only noisy observations of them. So we have access to position and velocity measurements with noise added in the actual training process. And here we can see that the LSTM in our, our network, which approximates our policy, actually drastically outperforms the MLP as we add noise. And again, this can tell us how these two networks, because both of them have access to a a state history, in this case we use a state history of length 15, but that state history is, is used by the network differently. We can see that the LSTM is much, a, much more able to, to use that state history to truly understand what's, what's happening even in the presence of noise. So this just gives us an idea that adding a memory aspect in a recurrent neural network to the actual uh, policy network itself, as opposed to simply adding his, an, a memory aspect to our state variable, can greatly improve performance when we have uh, either partially observable systems or noisily observable systems, because that memory aspect is able to, to incorporate state history much better than a simple MLP. Thank you. There are some more sources if you'd like to learn more about these topics. Thank you.